Hey guys, I'm Lucas and this is KNews episode 39 featuring the SpaceX Falcon 9. The powerhouse is the first stage booster which will be used in its reusable configuration using landing legs. Yes, this means the Falcon will attempt to land again. This however is not yet a used one so it's completely new. Above its flappy wings, which are unfolded after separation, sits the upper stage which will provide the majority of speed necessary to push the payload into its desired orbit. Speaking of it, the payload is a communication satellite for Japan and sits behind Falcon's usual 13 meter high and a little over 5 meter wide fairing. For comparison, you could fit an entire bus inside. The launch will take place at Cape Canaveral, Florida and the 2 hour long launch window opens at 5.52 am UTC or 1.22 am local time. After liftoff, the rocket will go up and turn eastwards fairly quickly to gain horizontal speed which is necessary to achieve a stable orbit. The rocket's final destination is a geosynchronous transfer orbit which delivers its payload to a roughly 35,000 km high altitude. After a little over 2 minutes into the flight, the rocket will split in half and separate its booster, which already used a majority of its fuel to push the upper stage into space. Since it is the reusable version of the booster, it will rotate itself and try to land on the drone ship, of course I still love you. It awaits its arrival in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, a few hundred kilometers away from the coast. At this point it is unknown how heavy the payload, called JCZ-14, really is because the Japanese company JSAT is very cautious about releasing information to the public. This means there is no way at this moment to tell for sure how much fuel the booster will have left to land. The only thing I know is its predecessor JCZ-13 had a mass of 4.5 tons at liftoff but was based on another satellite platform. If that turns out to be the same weight, it is well within Falcon's margins to land back safely again since the last payload going to such a transfer orbit is SES-9, weighing over 5 tons. As mentioned, JSAT released almost no information about their satellite and I actually had to translate Japanese text in order to get to know something. JCZ-14 will replace an older satellite, JCZ-2A, which was launched in 2002 and is placed at 154 degrees east. From there it can cover Asia, Australia and Hawaii with communication services like satellite television. However, only Japan will be covered by the so-called KU band. Such a frequency band covers a certain range of radio frequencies and in the case of KU it is 12 to 18 GHz. Just by the way, Hertz is named after the German physicist Heinrich Hertz and it basically stands for times per second. So a frequency of 18 GHz changes its amplitude 18 billion times per second. The easiest way to understand such a frequency band is to think of your local radio. A typical radio station could for example broadcast at 102.7 MHz. That is the so called carrier frequency of a signal. The same is done with satellites just in a higher frequency range of GHz instead of MHz. The higher the frequency, the more information can be squeezed on the wave. But the downside is it's more energy hungry and it also gets easier absorbed by clouds and rain. Once the upper stage has finished its job, the satellite will be released and fall towards its highest point, the apoapsis. There it will use its own engines and circularize its orbit. The nature of a geosynchronous orbit is an object placed there orbits at the same speed the earth rotates. This means the satellite will always stay in approximately the same position in space where we point our dishes at. Long before all that happens, the Falcon booster will light up the sky as it begins its final landing burn, a few hundred meters above the drone ship. If everything goes according to plan, it will once more land smoothly. However, this time really counts because the last attempt was performed going to the ISS and the booster could have also returned back to the launch site. The booster now has basically no choice other than to land on the ship, so it's in my opinion an equally important milestone and best luck to SpaceX nailing it. Ok, you can find the live stream and replay in the description. That was KNews episode 39 about Falcon 9 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.